And Major joins us now from Washington. So Major, tell me, did anything really come out of this meeting or was this just about showing that he can shore up his foreign policy creds? Well, it's about Donald Trump trying to let people know he's willing to learn. You talk to people who are either within the Trump inner circle or people who are becoming more comfortable getting closer to that inner circle. And the one thing they consistently say about Trump is he has the capacity to learn. He learns from mistakes and can move on. And what they're urging him to do is take steps to learn more about the world around him and not shoot from the hip so much as he has rhetorically making pronouncements about foreign policy that are based on his own intuitive sense of the way the world ought to work and learn more about the way the world does work and the role that a prospective major party nominee can have in shaping future events with what you say and most importantly with what you don't say. And Trump's inner circle has come to realize that on a lot of these fronts, some of which we just enumerated in that piece, Trump already has to do some repairs of things he said in order to put his positions, should he become president, in a more favorable and effective light. So that's part of what he's working on. One other thing I would just say quickly, Rena, about Henry Kissinger. It's not as if meeting with Henry Kissinger is going to reassure conservatives. There are plenty of conservatives in this country who remember when Henry Kissinger was Richard Nixon's national security advisor, then Secretary of State. He was loathed by Reagan era conservatives as an unprincipled realpolitik appeaser in Vietnam and with nuclear arms negotiations with the then Soviet Union. But Kissinger is a heavyweight in international relations and foreign policy, and so it is wise for Trump to go in that direction. But it's not as if seeing Henry Kissinger all of a sudden casts a glow and a halo around Trump among conservatives. It most certainly would not. Mm, I was wondering how that plays out in the conservative camp. I also want to ask you about Trump's Supreme Court list. Candidates don't really put out their list for the Supreme Court this early on. What's the saying, what's he trying to say with this list? So Trump has been told for the better part of two weeks by movement conservatives and those who very much key in on the future of the Supreme Court and the centrality of the Constitution and a constitutionalist approach to the presidency that Trump needs to do this. Do something unusual and reassure those who don't really know what his perspective is, either about the Supreme Court itself, the Constitution, or the kind of people he might appoint should he become president and should there become vacancies. And so Trump did a couple of things. He agreed, first of all, to put together a list. Then he talked to some very heavyweight Republicans slash conservatives in the legal community. Leonard Leo of the Federalist Society, Don McGahn, who is his Federal Elections Commission attorney. He advises him on all election law. Longtime attorney, well known in conservative circles on this, and other prominent names. And Jeff Sessions from the United States Senate from Alabama, also a voice key on putting this list together. And so Trump not only agreed to put this list out, but then he consulted the people that many conservatives would be willing to trust or at least accept on face value for giving Trump advice on this. He followed it to a large degree, and conservatives in general were positive, not just about the people on the list, but Trump's willingness to get out in this realm of his presidential campaign, be specific about the importance he applies to the court and future vacancies. I got to tell you one person on that list, Justice Don Willett. <laughs> Major, if you're not following him already, you got to follow <laughs> this man. Boy, he's pretty remarkable. He's actually mocked Trump a number of times. In June, he tweeted Donald Trump haiku, which you talked about in the evening news today. It would who would the Donald name to SCOTUS? The mind reels, weeps, can't finish tweet. And then in August, he said, can't wait till Trump rips off his face Mission Impossible style and reveals a laughing Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And then right. earlier, earlier in the month, when you realize it's 187 days until Election Day, makes you wonder how much vetting went into this here. You see the, the monkey there on that tweet. Right. So Don Willett, the Supreme Court Justice from Texas, is among the most entertaining people from any walk of life on Twitter. He is by far, in my humble estimation, the most interesting jurist in America on Twitter. Uh. He has a lively, entertaining, and uh, fearless Twitter feed, which is highly unusual for people in public life, and specifically those invested with dealing with weighty legal issues like anyone would on any state Supreme Court, Texas, in this case for Don Willett. And the first tweet you read, Rena, that haiku, mm -hmm. that wasn't just any day in June. Uh -huh. That was the day Donald Trump announced his campaign for presidency. Ah.
<laughs> That's fascinating, Major. Well, I got to tell you, Major, if Judge Judy were to resign and step down, he might have a future in television justice. Future in television and a profitable one at that. You're right. Absolutely right. Our Major <laughs> Garrett at the White House. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Our Washington Bureau. Thanks for joining Thanks. us, Major. Of course.